I am reaching out after the recommendation of iBuyPower and a friend of mine who is a little more familiar with PCs than me. After explaining what happened to the support team at iBuyPower and telling them I was in the Orlando, Florida area, they told me reaching out to you was my best bet. Over the past weekend, I was staying at my girlfriend's place and got a call Saturday from my roommate telling me our house was flooding. Something triggered the toilet to run and overflow throughout the night and my first thought was my PC. I immediately asked him to pick it up out of the water, but I am afraid it may have been too late. The PC was off at the time this happened and I have not tried turning it on yet as I don't want to cause any extra damage. The water wasn't super high, but I know it at least got into the bottom as when I moved it, a small amount of water leaked out of the bottom. There definitely wasn't a ton of water, so I really hope it may be salvageable and I really hope you are able to help. This here is that viewer's potentially broken gaming PC. And you heard that right. This thing, uh, was in toilet water. I thought it was really cool that somebody at iBuyPower recommended our channel and our fix or flop service to someone in our area. See, this rig is no longer under the iBuyPower warranty. I believe it's only a year long. So by the time this was flooded, well, he would have been out of pocket if he decided to go the iBuyPower route. This way, he doesn't have to pay anything at all, and I have a pretty good feeling we can have this up and running for him again by the end of this video. I think this one will be a fun one, and I hope you'll stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today, and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. So, toilet water. That's a new one, eh, Raymond? <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to get the gloves? Ah, it's a little too late for that, my friend. Uh, I'm not sure if that toilet was filled with anything when it overflowed. We'll just be washing along the way. Uh, it sounds like the only thing that might have been damaged was the power supply, and I told the owner it's a really good thing that he didn't try powering it on after it had soaked. Whether it was only an inch up from the bottom or two feet up, it, it, you never want to risk powering on a system that has been in a flood, whether it's salt or fresh water. Now everyone knows I'm an advocate for desktops actually being physically present on the desk and not on the floor. And I just have to point out that if this was actually on a desk, it wouldn't have flooded. Okay, Raymond has pointed out that it could have been a lot of water, but if we're talking like four feet or higher, I think we have bigger problems on our hands. So normally at this point, we would attempt to power the system in question on and replicate the issue described by the owner. However, we're obviously not gonna do that here because we suspect there might be power supply damage. And if we do turn this on and there is damage in here, it could take other components with it. And uh, well, there's a lot of expensive stuff in here that I don't wanna risk breaking. So we're going to isolate this power supply from everything else, test it separately with our power supply tester, and then replace this unit, regardless of whether this unit passes, with something that is brand new and that comes with a great warranty from our product sponsor, Be Quiet. Now this being an iBuyPower pre-built, I'm not expecting a really high-end power supply of any kind. And it looks like a 700 watt high power, 80 plus gold unit. It is not modular. And uh, well, honestly, it doesn't look like there's much of a sign of water ingress. It doesn't smell like your average power supply, I will say, but it doesn't smell like a sewer either which is probably a good thing. Just looking around now at the case, I don't see any watermarks really. It is a bit cleaner down here than it is everywhere else. And I think that's the result of water getting in here and moving some of the dust around, uh, but nothing major, which is also a good thing. It's also probably a good thing that there aren't any hard disk drives in this cage. And a quick second look around the power supply. It uh, doesn't look bad. You know, this was sitting fan side down. So this is a side that presumably would have been underwater and it looks Pretty impressive considering. Here we go then, powering on for the first time. And I've got to say, just from our brief physical inspection, I would be surprised if there was anything wrong with this. And uh, well, so far, yeah, everything looks normal. Everything looks healthy. It's all a pass. Ripples look surprisingly good for a unit like this. I would have thought it would be a, a bit worse for wear. Uh, timings all check out. Yeah, this unit, is probably totally fine. 
but we're not gonna take any chances. And that's where the Be Quiet Pure Power 12M comes into play. This is an 850 watt unit, which is a nice healthy bump over his 700. It's also still 80 plus gold certified, but this comes with a really great warranty. I would pit this unit up against any other unit in its price range. It's uh, just a solid all around contender and it's fully modular at that, which means we only have to connect what we need and that'll clean up a lot behind his motherboard tray. And not that you'd be seeing any of this once the power supply is installed, but it's also quite schmexy, if I do say so myself. Just has a really great design to it and it's not very large, not very deep, so it should fit in most towers. And if you're interested, this will be linked down below in the video description. I wanna give a huge shout out to Be Quiet for being the continued product sponsor of our Fixer Flop playlist. For now, let's get this thing installed. We've got our necessary cables attached. We're gonna carefully slide this back in from the right side. And after connecting things like the 8-pin EPS and the 24-pin, the last thing we can do here is tuck in extra unused cables into this hard drive cage just so he has the ability to expand later if he wants. Also gonna give him a replacement power cable just in case this got wet too. I'm not there, so I don't know, but uh, just wanna play it safe. And with this cable managed front and rear, I think we are ready to power on for the first time since the toilet flooding incident. <laughs> Sounds really weird to say, but I think we're gonna have a working system by the end of this. I'm pretty confident based on what I'm actually seeing. All right, so this one's for all the marbles. So far, so good. We're gonna try for not only a post, but also uh, loading straight into Windows. I believe this did have Windows loaded onto it prior to the flooding incident. It's uh, hanging a bit long on the vendor splash page. Yeah, I'm clicking the reset button on the board and uh, nothing's happening. That's, that's not good. Proper frozen system now that just power cycled on its own. Maybe second time's the charm. Okay, looking good so far. A few moments later. There we go. That is the sound I wanted to hear. Now we're gonna power cycle this a few more times off camera, assuming nothing else pops up. We just wanna make sure that uh, it does boot consistently into Windows before we give this back to the owner. But this looks like mission accomplished. Probably nothing wrong with the system to begin with. If I had to wager, the power supply again looks totally fine. We're gonna run one more test with that before we end this video. But the viewer system as it stands with the upgraded power supply is A-OK. -okay. And yes, don't worry, we'll be taking this outside and giving it a proper dusting before we return it because, well, it needs it. There's a lot of dust and looks like pet dander and other things in here that we'll try to address as well. The next thing to do is put the old power supply that we suspect still works into another system. I am willing to risk the other system frying, because that other system is an old Dell Alienware system that you've probably seen before. We're filming this out of order, so if you've already seen the video where we actually like revamp it and put you know a bunch of really high-end stuff into there, that's not what this is. This is the original Alienware hardware that we're going to risk for the sake of science. It does look a bit janky, but that's because I was too lazy to take the original power supply out. The primary stuff is connected with the viewer's old flooded toilet unit. Here we go. All right, so far so good. I don't think we powered the drive. I didn't connect any SATA power or Molex power uh, cables, so we'll probably just get a post and that's it. And there it was. And yeah, we're definitely not loading into Windows, but there you go. The unit was okay from the start. Now, do I regret doing any of the things we did in this video? Absolutely not, because I don't think we should be taking any chances with a power supply that has even remotely touched water. So. Two things you could do to avoid this. One, don't clog your toilet. Two, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two, put your PC on a desk, okay? And even if you don't have room on the desk that your monitors and keyboard and all that are on, maybe put it on a separate desk beside it. Just pick it up off the ground. Even a few inches can help, especially if your area is either prone to flooding or you have questionable plumbing or maybe questionable roommates who like clogging toilets. It is cleaning time. All right, I gotta say, she cleans up nicely. It looks almost like a brand new rig. And here we are, a system that works, I can't say again, because it likely already worked when it first arrived in the office, but I wanted to be cautious. I never 
like hearing stories like these because I mean, it's just, it's so dangerous. Something goes wrong with a power supply, whether it be water related or maybe uh, some kind of power surge, maybe a lightning strike from outside. We do live in Florida after all. I've heard horror stories. I've witnessed them myself and it can get very, very expensive the moment a power supply is ever called into question. I didn't want to take any chances and I'm really glad that the owner didn't either. He didn't power the system on and I've got to admit that probably saved him hundreds of dollars. It was a very smart decision and we've gone ahead and just as a precaution, replaced the power supply with a brand new one, higher wattage that he can maybe migrate to future builds if he so desires. I'm sure I'll see comments like, well, Greg, you also could have upgraded his CPU cooler while you were at it. I mean, that thing's really in need of something a bit beefier. Sure, you could make an argument to upgrade the case as well. While you're at it, let's upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs instead of 16. Maybe upgrade the CPU. You can see how this could go on for a while. We fixed what we thought thought was the crux of the issue and the system is stable again. We even confirmed that the BIOS idle temps for the CPU are stable. We're not going to fix something that doesn't need to be fixed unless we just have extra hardware that we're looking to hand out, which isn't admittedly all the time. I do think though that the viewer is going to be happy that he has a rig again that he can game with safe and sound without any worry with a new power supply that has a great warranty and should have plenty of wattage headroom for years to come. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a short one and I know some of you are gonna say, well, great, this wasn't even a broken system. It didn't even need fixing. That is true, but it could have been. It could have been very bad. And the precautions we took here, I'll stand by till the end of time because I never wanna see a power supply take other components with it. And that very well could have been the case had this unit actually been defective since the flood. So just always good to play it safe when it comes to a power supply. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Leave a comment down below. Check out relevant links in the video description and stay tuned for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.